Now, Lee Camp is a comedian, a political commentator, and host of most censored news, which will be most of the news, actually. And he joins me now from the United States. Lee Camp, welcome, as always, to the mother of all talk shows. Let's start with news so censored, virtually nobody knows it, that the Pentagon again failed its audit. In fact, has never passed an audit. What's that all about? Who's stealing America's money? Yeah, this is a massive story that has gotten almost no coverage over the past couple of months. <laughs> uh, of course, your mainstream media is not going to tell you about this, but our Pentagon, which uses and takes in trillions of dollars, uh, you know, the budget is in the 800 billion range. However, that doesn't count various black budget projects, those done in the dark of night. So it's well over a trillion a year. But then on top of that, over 15 years, uh, it, 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 the, the, by the Pentagon's own books, we know they had $21 trillion of unaccounted for adjustments in their books, financial adjustments. Uh, and And despite all of that, they have never passed an audit. They were legally obligated by Congress to do an audit starting in the 90s, and they never did one until about five years ago. They finally agreed to audit their books. It took over a thousand, I think maybe 2,000 auditors. It took hundreds of millions of dollars to do, and they came up with, a, with an answer after all of that work that they had failed their audit. And then a couple of years go by and they do it again and again and again. And just recently, for the fifth time, they failed their audit. And within that failure, they said they cannot account for over half of their assets. I mean, you couldn't make this up if you were re writing a comic book or something. No, you couldn't. I mean, we're used to being we used to be in something called the European Union, which never passed its audit either. Uh, but at least that got something of a public airing. At least they got an annual embarrassment out of it. Um, I'm sure that the top brass of the military are not embarrassable. But you would have thought in a democracy that the politicians overseeing this kind of reckless chicanery would at least be embarrassable. Are they? No, and by all the evidence that I can see, Congress doesn't even seem to care. I mean, I have not seen any discussion by Congress about this yet again audit failure. Uh, de the defense you know, secretary or one of his goons came out and did a little press conference where they said, we failed our audit, but we made progress. We came to a conclusion quicker. And my response to that is sucking quicker, failing quicker, is not a win. That doesn't go down as you actually succeeding. And yet here they are with no shame saying that's the answer after five audits. And I don't think they will ever uh, reveal their books, reveal what's actually going on. Like I said, in some of the revelations we've seen, we know that they can't account for over half their assets. And these are literally things like it's everything from weapons to, to tanks to jets to buildings and roads. They, the Pentagon, with 900 whatever military bases around the world, literally doesn't know every building they own. They don't know if people are in the buildings they own. And when the the uh, you know investigators go to check these things out, they often find that a building that they thought was being used is not. A building they thought wasn't being used is. Uh, they have no idea what with any of this stuff, where it is, what's happening. And they, of course, this is the largest mass murder machine in the world. And I don't mean that as some, you know, histrionic term. This is literally the largest machine of organized human murder that exists in the world right now. And they don't even know where the weapons are, where the money's going. I to what extent then is America a democracy if an overweening military, as was warned of by General Eisenhower uh, as late, uh, as long ago as the 1950s, uh, has become so powerful as to be impervious even to the auditors, to what extent is America, uh, not on, not, they call themselves the leading democracy, to what extent is it a democracy at all? 
uh whatever's less than zero on that on that level because not only do you have all of the ways that our election systems are, are are rigged in one form or another of course the biggest one being simple money but besides that these people are not elected these people running the pentagon everywhere throughout the entire structure of the pentagon these are unelected people and then on top of that the elected so-called elected people that we have in congress and in the white house they aren't even looking into these books they don't even seem to care that there's trillions of dollars of so-called missing assets and and 21 trillion dollars of unaccounted for adjustments i i mean it, they are completely unaccountable to anyone not the not the uh, average americans not the uh, representatives that supposedly represent us and the mainstream media what you know they're supposedly supposedly supposed to be the ones that that look into this type of thing that uh call these politicians and this pentagon to account for for these horrible grievous actions and they if anything they generally defend the actions of the pentagon the new york times famously did an article trying to defend the 21 trillion of unaccounted for adjustments financial adjustments by saying oh well generals aren't very good at keeping the books as if that explains 21 <laughs> trillion dollars it of course cannot it has to be yeah. something systemic they have to intentionally be laundering this money it is the world's largest laundering machine money laundering machine really it puts the it takes the money from the taxpayers which is really printed by our central banking system it takes that money and it launders it through the pentagon and it puts it in the pockets of weapons contractors and politicians and 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 think tanks and it's a it's a money laundering scheme I mean, I was going to, it's a bit unfair because neither of us is an economist, but how, how can America afford all of this, Lee? Where does all this money come from? The last time I looked, the United States manufacturing base was shrunken, its infrastructure rotting and crumbling. I know that half of the people of the United States are either officially poor or on low incomes, 70% without proper health care insurance and so on. Where does all this money come from and why is it spent in such a madcap way? Well, that's why I love coming on your show because you get to the key question. You get to the heart of the issue. Uh, the, the truth is, uh, America doesn't have this money. We go into debt to the tune of what? What is it? Thirty trillion now, or something like that. It's it's largely meaningless now. Why does our currency not lose power when you're thirty trillion in debt and you're just printing money out of nowhere endlessly? because of the petrodollar and the dollar being the global reserve currency. So as long as that petroleum is still flowing and the, most nations are using the dollar as reserve currency, we can print as much as we want, which is what the United States does. Yet they still run around with this dog and pony show saying, oh, we need to collect tax dollars in order to be able to afford things. But of course, that's not the real heart of the issue. That's not where the real truth lays. And they, you know, meanwhile, they use that same lie to say we don't have enough money whenever you say Americans should have health care, Americans should have good social security, should have better schools, should fix that infrastructure you missed, you mentioned with, with uh, 50,000 structurally deficient bridges across the United States. Who knows when another one of those will collapse underneath your car. Whenever people say we need all these things that a functioning, positive, good, healthy society should have, our lawmakers do their job, do their job in this Shakespearean tragedy by running around and saying we don't have the money for that. But when it comes to dropping bombs, when it comes to weapon contractors, when it comes to funding proxy wars in Ukraine, we have all the money in the world. It's always there. And uh, your friend and mine, Jimmy Dore, was on the show on uh, on Sunday, uh, and he he drew the analogy uh, of uh, the U.S. political system, uh, the the Republican uh, Democrat dog and pony show, uh, he drew the analogy of the Harlem Globetrotters. In other words, it's not really basketball, it's just a show. Uh, that didn't translate all that well uh, to a UK audience. <laughs> uh, so I was thinking about how to do so, and it, it struck me, it's like professional wrestling. Uh, the two wrestlers 
pretend to fight each other. And the audience pretend that they're watching a real fight when everybody concerned knows that it's an entirely choreographed farce. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's, that's a good analogy. And when I used to watch as a kid, I don't know if they still do this. They used to always have the big names, the Hulk Hogan's and the macho man, Randy Savages against some guy you'd never heard of. And you kind of knew who was going to win, <laughs> who was going to lose because you knew it was choreographed yeah. and you knew the guy you'd never heard of wasn't going to beat Hulk Hogan. And that's, you know, that's what it is with the Democrats and the Republicans. The Democrats go, oh, we want to help people. We should do something for health care. We should, et cetera. And the Republicans go, no, no, no. And what do you know? The Democrats just can never get those things to happen. They can never really get a, a minimum wage, good minimum wage for people. They can just never make these changes. But they do. They go through the show anyway. They go through the theatrics anyway. Although there has been one change over the past, you know, 20 years in that neither party seems to stand up against war at all. There's essentially zero debate against war. Maybe there's a couple of Republicans that are against the proxy war in Ukraine, but there's really no anti-war party even to pretend that they are against it. It, do it doesn't exist. Now, the president of the Republic had his house in Delaware raided today by the FBI. Uh, as the previous president of the Republic had his house raided by the FBI in Florida a couple of months ago. What on earth is going on, Lee? Well, there's a couple of things going on. One thing is, I mean, is anyone surprised Joe Biden doesn't know which papers are where? I mean, I don't think he knows which room he's in, uh, you know, and Trump's brain isn't much better. But Beyond that, as former CIA man John Kerryaku said, this speaks to the insane classification that goes on with American government now. Every paper that ever passes through the White House in any regard is classified because, the, how you know, God forbid they ever show the American people what is actually happening in the White House. So you have meaningless pieces of paper being classified endlessly. So that's part of it. But then the other thing I think is, you know, the, the, the ongoing thing with Trump, and I'm no fan of Trump. I'm no fan of Biden, uh, is that the, the it's a rift in the ruling elite, the ruling class. Many of them, probably, you know, 70, 80 percent did not think Trump was a good CEO for America, Inc. And they want him out of the way. They think he'd likely win a reelection if he's allowed to run, you know, quote unquote, fairly in our rigged system. And so they needed a way to stop him now. And they thought they had it with this classified papers thing. But it turns out that Biden and Pence and probably every president has had classified papers stuck to their shoe all over the place. <laughs> now, I read a story today, uh, please tell me this can't be true, that uh, in place of Joe Biden, and you'd have to be a real optimist to believe that he can run again in two years' yeah. time, uh, the Democrats are grooming Michelle Obama to run for, as it were, a third Obama White House. Is that true? <laughs> I haven't read that one, but... Who, who knows? I remember uh, a few years ago they were saying it was going to be Oprah was going to going to take over. But, you know, I think what this speaks to is that it, it's it's a borderline meaningless position. Uh, th that doesn't mean there th some things don't change. I mean, some things do change, but it, it largely the machinery of the system in America continues exactly apace. It doesn't really change. The military industrial complex continues. Big pharma continues. Big oil continues. Big ag continues. None of it changes that severely. There are some trimmings here and there that get adjusted. But for the most part, the, the, the two corporate teams that are on the same team 90% of the time just want to put someone up that represents a, 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 the idea that Americans actually had a choice. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's laughable and good for you as, uh, as a comedian, uh, the, this, uh, this dog and pony show, as you put it. But for those of us in the rest of the world, it, it, it's less than laughable or more than laughable in the sense that uh, your government is effectively dictating to all the other governments of what they call the West. 
Now, the West is only 13% of the population of the world, but it happens to be the place where we have to live. Uh, and European governments have now self-lacerated their own economies. They've self-harmed their own economies and their own people on the orders of a guy who, as you put it, doesn't know which room he's in, what day it is. It, you see our, our, our quandary here, Lee. Yeah, and I, I think the, the, it's because of the big picture. The big picture is the U.S. is losing uh, global hegemony. There's a great split in the world's economy ha happening right now, economies with China and Russia on one side and the U.S. and Europe on the other. And the U.S. was is using this proxy war for multiple things, but one of them is to force much of Europe back into a kind of vassal state system. And, you know, especially with, with Germany and France, they were kind of forced into this. You can either cooperate with Russia or you can cooperate with the United States, but you can't have both. And so now, like as you appropriately put it, they're self-harming and the UK along with them to in order to stay in the, the good graces of a, a bloodthirsty uh, hegemony. Wow. Well, uh, the Oscars are coming up, Lee. Uh, have you got any insight into them uh, for us? Uh, is Zelensky going to show up? I, I, I do have some insight into the Oscars, and we did not discuss this before I got on here, but uh, I certainly hope Zelensky does not show up, but he could win a Best Acting Award. I think that would be, that would be uh, well-deserved, <laughs> uh, you know, being the, being the head of... Being a Jew like myself and the head of a, a fairly neo-Nazi army is quite an acting uh, achievement. But I also will make a call in the uh, in the genre, uh, the the area of uh, best animated film. I think it will go to my brother's movie, Marcel the Shell with Shoes. My brother is up for best animated film. Well, I'm getting on that right away. If the bookmakers are still open, Lee Camp. Thank you for joining us on the mother of all talk shows. How remarkable, I had no idea.